our church, and our region. In Jesus' name, we bind every spirit that would try to disrupt what God's about to do. And Father, we release your angels to do their work in this region in 715. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Come on, we give you the praise. We magnify you. We lift you high. Hey, Kalaba. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Keep your hand lifted and pray in that Holy Ghost. Father, we come against every demonic entity, every demon spirit, every spirit of sabotage that would try to hinder what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, lift your right hand again and say, Today I will be taught the incorruptible, indestructible seed of the Word of God. Come on, say it with authority, the seed of the Word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And from this day forward, we as a church will never ever be the same. Somebody put a praise in the Jake, thank you for filling in and thank you, band, for pushing through. You did a great... How many believe they did a great job? Amen. You may be dismissed from the platform. Um, uh, I have a prophetic word, but before I do that, Sister Sharon wanted me to tell you all hello. Uh, she misses being here. She does not like being at home today. Um, she had to get up to pray with me to see me out of the church, to, uh, to, out to church today. And I thank God for a woman like that. Amen? Amen. And if you saw what they pulled out of her back, you know it was no la it was no little incidents. It was a serious bulge in her between her L5 and S1. She's gingerly walking. I've got her in the shower. I, I've had to help her tremendously. And today people are saying, well, who's helping her today? Well, Jaden came home to help his mom. Come on, somebody. So I think she's in good hands. He's very strong, very agile. He's an MMA. He's trained for MMA fighting. I, I don't think the devil wants to mess with him either. <laughs> Amen. So um, I just thank God for my sons. They check on their mother every day. I thank God for all your prayers, all your concern, all your love, um, the text messages, the, the, the messages on Facebook. My wife has, has felt your love and felt your prayers. And I thank God that we're part of this church. We could have moved away. We could have took another child. We could have, but we would have never had the love that we have in this church. Amen. Amen. So um, thank you all. It's, it's hard for me to watch my wife go through what she's going through because she's a warrior. <laughs> She is a, a, a standard of truth in my life. She's a standard of wisdom in my life. Um, she, she just told me when I went to church today, she said, go knock the devil out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How, how many want to help knock the devil out? Because I have a different kind of word today. I have something that God spoke to me. Listen, at 4 a.m. this morning, when I got up this morning, I was up by 3, and by 4 a.m., I was praying and praying. By 4 a.m., he began to download some stuff into my spirit. And it was not a sermon. This is not a sermon. Everybody say, this is not a sermon. Uh, this is a prophetic word that I'm about ready to release over you. It's 11 pages long. Did you hear me? It's 11 pages long. But this is what God told me to say to you today because I never want to get up in here and not say what God said. I don't want to be guilty of saying what God didn't say either. Can I get an amen? And I, I told God that if what you have spoken to me, and I was trying to type as fast as I could hear it, and I said, God, if what you have spoken to me 
is, is of truly of you, you point it out in your word. <laughs> because I believe this, that any prophecy that you get better be backed up by the word. Can I get a better amen? God has never given me this long of a prophecy before, but that's because I believe he's doing a new thing. I believe this church is moving into regional power. I can't get nobody to shout amen. This church is going beyond the city of Wisconsin Rapids and is getting ready to reap a region for the glory of God. And uh, uh, so, so as God was downloading, I was getting excited. I was getting happy. I was getting joyful. I was. I, I, I mean, I even got a place in, in this word from the Lord where it says, "You will no longer be overcome by your enemies. You are coming into a place." I want you to shout. I'm coming into a place of ultimate victory. Say it again. I'm coming into a place of ultimate victory. Say it again like you believe it. I'm coming into a place of ultimate victory. Now shout amen like you believe it. Amen. Because I got some parallels here. Uh, and this is, not, this is not a preach. This is not a teach. This is a prophecy. But I want you to uh, go with me through the scriptures before we dive in. So everybody, everybody up on the screen, Revelation 3, 8. I want, I want everybody to read these scriptures with me out loud so it gets in your spirit. I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. Somebody shout amen right there. God is opening a door right now that no man can shut. Can I get an amen? You have little strength, yet... Sharon Bishop, you have little strength right now, but you're obeying his word. And you did not deny me. Come on. Zechariah 4.10. Read it with me. Do not despise these. What? For the Lord. What? <laughs> to see the work. What? <laughs> to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Verse uh, Acts 2.17. Read it with me. In the last days, God says, I will what? Come on, on some people. All people. Your son, I want you to say it like this. My sons and my daughters will. My young men will. And my old men will what? And then verse 18. In those days, read it with me. I will pour out my spirit even on my what? How many are glad you're a servant of God? Shout amen. Men and what? Women alike. And they will prophesy. Somebody shout, I can prophesy. It didn't leave anybody out. Uh, then let's go to Isaiah 22, 22. I will give him the what? Key to who? House of David. The highest where? The highest position where? The highest position where? See, to get to the highest position in the royal court, you got to have a key. Watch now. Uh, uh, and, and when he opens the door, read it. No one will be able to what? Ah, somebody shout, the devil can't close it. Circumstances can't close it. And when he closes the doors, no one. Come on, no one. We got a lot of scripture I'm going to read to you. Isaiah 43, 19. I threw this one in. It's not in my notes. Read it with me. For I am about to do Read that again. I am about to do. See, I have already won. I want you to look at your neighbor. See, he already started the new thing. Now shout amen like you believe it. Now give God a praise like you want. Like you want. I've already begun. Don't you see it? Come on. I will make through the what? Through Wisconsin. And I will what? Create where? What? Rivers where? In a dry. How many know that we're in a dry land, but God's getting ready to saturate it with His glory? Uh, look at Revelation 3 7. Read it with me. I got two more scriptures. You ready? And write this letter. Come on, to the angel of the. Can we, can we insert Wisconsin Rapids? <laughs> uh, this is the message from the one who is what? The one who has what? The key. I want you to say the river church has the key of David. Say it again. The river church has the 
Come on, say it again. The river church has what? The key of David. Then, then we can go to the royal court and get what we need. Come on, somebody. Ah. And what he opens, what? No one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. Then we're going to go to Amos 9, 13. Read it with me. Things are going to happen so fast. So what? Look at somebody and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Things are about ready to accelerate. Come on, tell somebody else. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Things are about to accelerate. Come on, tell somebody and shout. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Things are about to accelerate. Now put a praise on it. Put a shout on it. Come on, that was no shout. Put a shout. so fast your head will swim read it with me one thing fast on the your miracle is about to show up your breakthrough is about to come your money is about to come your camels that are loaded down are about to happen and they're bringing every pro come on they're bringing every provision for your life watch this now you won't be able to what you ain't reading with me. You won't be able to what? You won't be able to what? How many want the blessings to chase you down to such an intensity that you can't keep up with the blessings? Everything will be, come on, happening how? Uh, everything will be happening how? At once and everywhere you look, blessing. Now shout to God and give Him praise for the blessings that are coming. I pondered those scriptures after I um, after I'm going to give you what God gave me to give to you and um, this is what he said to me for not for th this is not for the all the churches in the world this is for specifically the river church. this is for what God is going to do here and he said I'm getting ready to open a great door for you your time is coming to walk through that door. Somebody put a break. But River Church, River Church, he said, you must stop focusing on the disappointments of yesterday. I can't get nobody to help me. You must stop focusing on the disappointments of yesterday, for I am hauling them away from you. And I'm taking it from the midst of you. Know this, River Church. You are no longer a people of reproach in this region. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear God. He said, you are no longer a reproach in the region. See, when we went through all the transitions that we went through, men started talking about us. Denominations tried to bury us. People started talking rumors and lies that had no, in, no truth in them whatsoever. And we became a reproach. But God is saying, because I'm raising you up to a, re a regional power, no more reproach. Somebody shout amen. Hear me, Wisconsin. Hear me, he said. He, he's speaking to me this morning. He said, Wisconsin is my state. Come on. <laughs> and though others of the faith look down on you, the River Church, because of what they consider to be abnormal, we ain't your cookie cutter place. We let the Holy Ghost have Holy Ghost power in His way in this house. We speak with other tongues. We believe in the casting out of devils. We believe in miracle working power. Have your dead religion all you want, but God's getting ready to do a new thing. He said, because others look down on you because of what they consider to be abnormal, you have the fullness of my spirit. So stand in humility. Don't get all puffed up and prideful because you got the Spirit of God in here. Stay in humility. Stay humble because He can take it away from you as fast as He gave it to you. Then He said, are you ready for this one? I'm about to bring down the Pharisees of this region and exalt the humble of my household. Humble 
humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will exalt you. He will lift you up. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I have placed my stamp of approval on this place. And the set time of my favor is coming on you. And then I heard soon. Favor uh, like you've never experienced before is about ready to encapsulate you. Come on, somebody. Nobody's happy about what God is saying. I'm excited about it because God's getting ready to expand this place. He said, River Church, your set time of my ridiculous favor is coming on you. Anybody want ridiculous favor? Anybody want ridiculous miracles? What about, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Woo, ridiculous favor. We receive ridiculous favor. We receive ridiculous miracles. We receive ridiculous breakthroughs. When everybody else said we can't have it, God, you're going to do it anyway. Amen. Then the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, embrace the new things that I want to do for you. Embrace the new things. Everybody say new things. Not the old way we did it before, but a new way. Come on, somebody. Embrace the new thing that I have for you. Please, please, my people, listen to what he told me. Don't copy others. Then he said, don't copy other ministries. I don't think we're worried about that. Then he told me this, when you, and I'm telling you, this is all from the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? When you try to duplicate others who have done great things, you take away from me my creativity that I have for you. Whoa, baby, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm on fire today. I don't want to do it like everybody else. I want to do it the way he wants it to get done. That's why I don't fit everywhere. I'm an odd duck. Can I get an amen? I don't, you know, I don't squeak when I walk, but I'm an odd duck. Can I get an amen? <laughs> he said, embrace, listen, what I've made you to be and let it begin to explode from this place. See, and until everybody in here embraces the vision of what God wants to do, then when we do that, this place is going to explode. Then he said, are you ready for this one? Everybody hear me. You are no longer to be ashamed of your uniqueness. I can't. Uh, not everybody. Oh, you know, look at that Ruby Trump. She gets up, jumps, shouts out. Don't be ashamed. Of, don't be ashamed of a youth pastor that preaches the gospel. Embrace what I made you to be and let it begin to explode from this place. You are no longer to be ashamed of your uniqueness in me, even though it may not look like it. God said he's accelerating the life cycle of this church. It may not look like it right now. It may look like things are slowing down. But I got a reminder of God this morning when I was in that airplane. And I said, God, it's going slow. He said, you're going faster than you think. Amen. Then, then the, the word, you know, it got quiet. And then I saw myself scratching on the ground. I saw myself scratching and clawing, almost like it was if I was trying to find a source of living water. Uh, wow. It was a dry desert area, and I was crying out to God, and I said, God, you got to release your fountainhead. Yeah. Are you with me? Uh, that's been a prophecy over this church that it shall be the fountainhead of God's life, love, and power. I was trying to find it and as I sifted through the dirt, 
and dug deep. I was probably five, six feet in the ground in my spirit. I saw water. And when I finally clawed out all the debris, the water shot up like this. And it began to gush in the north and gush in the south and gush in the east. And how many believe God's going to release his river of living water? Shout amen. I love this part because I love you. <laughs> he, I, I heard him say, I have come to abide in this place. Wow. Not because I love this place more than other places in the region, but because you have created a dwelling place for my wow. spirit. Wow. Then I knew in my spirit that God feels welcome here. His spirit feels excited to be amongst you. Come on. Anybody happy about that? Because if God ain't here, I don't want to be here. He feels welcome here. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that you feel welcome here. You know that God comes. I, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, He comes and visits every time we meet, even though you don't see it. Come on, tell somebody else, He's here every time we meet. Even though you don't see it. He's here right now. I can feel his presence. I can, I can feel his presence all around me. Then I heard this. Know this river church. That this house is to become a house that will never be defeated again. For the time is coming that the river church will never ever again be overwhelmed by the demonic. will become the place of ultimate victory. Somebody put a praise for victory. Then God said, I'm going to raise up a habitation, listen, of healing and miracle working power in this place. This church will be seen for hundreds of miles. goes back to when Bishop Ampion spoke to me many, many years ago. They will come from over 100 miles away. Then he said, out of this place a river will flow that will touch the entire state and then the states around it. This habitation of miracle working power and healing will stretch from state to state and trickle into other states. The river church, he said, will be a reflection of many prophetic voices and it will be joined across this nation as one of the end time churches for my glory. And he said, tell him, tell you, I'm observing my people. I'm absor observing this precious core of this congregation. Talking to the core. He said, this is my church in this region where I am welcomed. This is where I find my people. Aren't you glad you're part of his people if you are shout Amen. In this place, I have found those that I can fellowship with. And then I can, because I can fellowship with them, I can fully authorize my greatness in them. Yeah. Know this river church, there will be a spirit of religious jealousy that will rise up. Oh, yeah. But God said, I will extinguish it for you. Somebody put a praise on me. They're going to get jealous, but that's all right. We're going to be blessed. Then I will distinguish you among the who's who. You didn't hear me. He said, then I will distinguish you among the who's who. Then I remember that Sharon, when she was in Bible college, they had a book called The Who's Who. And her name was in it. For singing and flute. She was known as one of the who's who. 
And if I can find that book, I'll prove it to you. I believe you. <laughs> then the Lord said the word many. I said, what many? He said, son, as you leave this place, you must think bigger. You must think much bigger. You say bigger, I say yes. Because I don't feel capable of sometimes to do the... Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? Then he said this. Son, don't you understand? I have hungry people in the Catholic Church. I have hungry people in the Baptist Church. I have hungry people in the Wesleyan Church. I have hungry people in the Lutheran Church. I have hungry people in the Congregational Church. I have hungry people in the United Methodist Church. I have hungry people in the Moravian Church. Listen, child, I have hungry people in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Church of the Latter-day Saints. God's going to do something big. Shout, God's going to do something big. Then he said, does not my word, son, say that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh? Did not I say that your sons and daughters will prophesy? I will visit all of those churches. But many of them will not allow me to stay. You know why? Because religion will get in the way. And because of that, because they will not allow me to stay after my visitation, I'm going to open up the gateway of the sheep pen. I've never got a word like this. And you will not have to do anything, son, but trust me. Speaking right now. He said, I'm speaking right now to many and bringing many of my people who are in other places because they need true prophetic revelation and a real right. shepherd. Right. 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 That is the truth. Yeah. Mm. Amen. You don't think this shook me this morning? You, you don't think this made me a little bit nervous? <laughs> then he said, I'm releasing upon this church. Listen. The mandate of apostolic anointing for signs, wonders, and miracles. going to get my dictation machine out next time. Can I get an amen? Then he said, think it not strange that you and your congregation, listen to this, think it not strange that you and your congregation have encountered such intense warfare against their bodies, against their family, and against their own faith. You that pray, though, you that believe, you of great faith, it's time to embrace victory. Do not do not be afraid, because it will not only be uh, those who are deemed by titles and positions that are given by my kingdom, but to those who are common people as well. The teachers, the salesmen, the Walmart worker, the city worker, the truck driver, the mom and the dad who seem ordinary. He said, are about to do the extraordinary for my kingdom. Somebody put a praise on there right now. Activate it right now with your shout. I got more. Then he said, I'm setting up the I'm setting up the river church to become a name of recognition. But only for my glory and for my yes. reputation to yes. be established in the region. Yes. 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 I wish Sharon was here because I have her on that piano right now. Uh, we need an organist right now. Yeah, we need a black organist right now. They're coming. We're going to have more than enough. Too much overflowing. Because when we go to two and three services, we're going to need teams. Can I get an amen? He said, listen to this church. He said, 
I'm getting ready to draw many here. Shout many. I will draw, I will draw those who feel as though I will draw those who are feeling like they're on their last leg. They feel dead and dry. But in this place, God said, listen, I will give them life and hope. But listen to me. Be careful. He said, do not judge them too harshly. For I am bringing many here that don't look like you or act like you. Some of them will be bound in alcoholism. Some of them will be bound in drug addiction. Some of them will be bound in pornography and alternate lifestyles. I got quiet there. I don't want them gay people in my... Why not? God wants to liberate them. Can I get a better amen? Bring them. Bring them. I don't want the freaks in here. Why not? God wants to set them free. And some of them freaks will be on more on fire than you. That's right. That's right. Set free in the name of Jesus. He said, I have called this church to liberate them because I gave you the keys of David. Yes, he said, the river church now possesses the key of David. You don't have to beg for it. You already, come on, you already got it. Right. Whew, am, I, am I giving this too heavy or are you getting it? He said, I'm going to launch your worship here to the next level. Then he said, why do you think the minstrel of this house has been so fiercely attacked? That's right. That's right. Yes. That's why the enemy, he said, attacked her back because he does not want her standing in faith. That's why the enemy wants her jaw shattered because he knows when she opens her mouth, darkness is shattered. Remember when David played the harp? The Bible says that evil spirits departed from Saul. And when my wife is up here, and I thank God for every team member on this platform. I thank God that Jake has stood up to the plate. I thank God that Sister Darlene has stood up to the plate. And we're going to do something special for them. Come on, somebody. But when my wife is all healed up and back and ready, she coming back greater than she went out. Then God, on the way here, he said, wait a minute, I got some more for you. He said, do you remember Samson? Well, well. How did he defeat it? his enemies? Be, this was before he was taken into captivity. The Bible says he defeated and killed his enemies with a jawbone of a donkey. <laughs> Come on, sir, your victory is in your mouth. Your victory is in your mouth. Your breakthrough is in your prayers. Your healing is in your worship. What? Is this good? Yeah. Is God good? Because I'm only going to say what He told me to say today. He said, I'm, I'm now unlocking the doors of provision for the vision that I've given to this house. I'm raising up people that are ordinary to become extremely wealthy. Only a few of you are happy that you ain't. I don't believe it. I'm going to fix it. Stop saying that. Stop cursing your future. Then I heard him say again, millionaire anointing is on this place. Then he said, and I said, God, do I really got to minister this on, on 4th of July? I had a sermon all ready to preach on freedom. Well, we're in liberation right now. Can I get an amen? He said, this day, I'm releasing my abundance of provision on this place. I 
and the Lord am over this economy, not President Biden nor the government. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Can I get a praise on it? He said, I, the Lord, I'm, I'm here glad that God's over the economy. I don't care how high the gas price gets, he'd give you supernatural gas mileage. Then I heard God say, I'm getting ready <laughs> to break off lack in this region. Then I will break it off your state and my blessings will come because new enterprise and new entities are being developed in this region. And the cities and the city and this city and the cities and towns nearby will start begin to explode with new growth and prosperity for my people. The wealth, he said, I'm getting ready to release is not just to cause you to heap things up for yourself. To build my kingdom and take care of the poor, he said. Then he told me, if you have a heart for the poor and needy, I will load my provision on you. Stop saying, uh, you know, I can't afford no backpacks. You can afford McDonald's. You can afford uh, the Taco Death. Come on, somebody. You, you can afford to go out to uh, Applebee's from time to time. You can take a little bit of that money and bless some of these poor kids. Well, you know, when we're driving off at the bus, it doesn't matter who's in charge of it. You are contributing to their breakthrough. We got to stop fighting each other and start working together around here. Are you ready for this one? Never ever, never ever, especially those who have been in this church since the beginning, never despise the day of small beginnings. For soon you will look back and this place will seem small in your eyes. Come on. 150 seats ain't nothing. What are you going to do when there's 1,200 of them? Come on. I can't get nobody to say anything. We need more vacuum. More vacuum nurse, too. God told me he's going to start sending doctors here. Yeah. Lawyers here. People with influence here. He's going to send city leaders here. People are crying out for the truth. Come on, somebody. And the truth will set them free. Somebody put a praise on them. Mm. Then he said, what I'm about to do in you and through this place will have national and international impact. I'm telling you, I didn't come with a sermon. I came with a prophecy. Anybody getting revelation on this? Is it bearing witness with anybody in the building? If it is, shout amen and give God praise. Then he warned me, he said, I'm not doing this for you to be renowned. I'm not doing this to make you puff up with pride. I'm only doing this because you made habitation for me. Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. Shout from the rooftops, baby. Amen. So I'm telling you that God, by his Holy Spirit, is getting ready to shift us into a whole new realm, a whole new level. God is getting ready to rip the rafters off this building because what he's about to do is not, we don't have enough room to contain it. And I'm sorry if that offends you. 
I'm sorry if that makes you jealous of this place. If you're watching me online, all my lovers out there, we love you in the name of Jesus. But God is getting ready. Come on, somebody. God is getting ready to do something greater. He's getting ready to do something mightier. He's getting ready to do something more powerful. He's getting ready to have breakthroughs come. He's getting ready to see the rivers part. He's getting ready to help you walk on dry ground. Your camels are loaded down and they're on the way. Provision is on the way. Blessings are on the way. I can't get nobody to help me shout. Healings are on the way. Cancer is about ready to die. Sugar diabetes is about ready to be dismantled. High blood pressure issues are about ready to be gone from you. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. You got a word? Oh. So Wednesday night after church, um, Larry and I got a word from the Lord. Um, we recorded it, um, and the plan was for those of us who would be at Brandon and Amanda's for the 4th of July to play it for the church. It was a now word for the church, um, the River Church, and it coincides with what Pastor is basically saying. So that's confirmation. Come on, this is Wednesday. Um, but third, well, Wednesday, no, Thursday, I sent out a little something to um, a few of the ladies um, that the Lord was talking to me. He's been talking to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I talked to Brandon because um, we got this thing. Um, and I know a few of you probably since Wednesday got this stirring in your belly. Yes, you know? yes, yes. A big stirring. Like something big is about to happen. Yep, yep, yep. And the Lord... Um, is really calling out the River Church. Like, Pastor is right on point with what um, needs to happen. And some of what I wrote was, um, as I listened to the Lord, he said, the mind is the core to things unma unimaginable. Ooh. So there are things that are about to happen that we never even thought could happen for this little church. But they are big. They're big in the kingdom. They are big in this street. They are really big. So we need to be on board with what's going to happen. And he said in that, I need you to spew out the thoughts of wicked and ungodly things. Those things that are in your mind that you think about that are not godly. God needs to cleanse that. We need to get that out of our mind. Not only that, he wants us to dig deep in our hearts. Like deep. He said... We need to exhume the things that need to leave. Yeah. Uh, exhume means stuff that's buried, like a body that's buried and you pick it up and open it up. So we need to dig deep in our hearts and figure out what is in there that is not causing God to get it out. We, we need him to get it out. Um, and then he said, I am not asking. He's not asking He's us. He's not asking. He's telling us. That in order for us to move forward, it's going to be encouraged, trust, love, and faith in Him. So I believe in order, in order to move forward, He's telling us that we need to have courage, trust, love, and faith in Him. So I truly believe that um, something big is about to happen for the river. Um, there's a lot to it. Um, I think my recording is, what is it, like an hour and a half of the Lord just speaking to us about things for the River Church. You were busy, so I didn't contact you about it. But um, God is really moving in this place. Um, and something he said when you were talking about um, his spirit being here, uh, Wednesday night, he said that to us, and we recorded it. He said he comes here even though everyone, you know, don't press in. Majority of us hunger for his spirit, and that's why he comes anyway. And he's here 
with us and he enjoys it. Like it makes him glad because it's not a want, it's more of a need that we need him and he sees that we need him. So he is willing, he has chosen the River Church for this time, this season. And like I, I'm excited about it. I don't know if anybody else is excited about it. Like honestly, you know, I know some people are looking for I have to put this down. So, you know, like form praise and virtue of God was really moving this morning. Yes, yes. And I walked over and I told Brandon, you know, the spirit came, but at the same time there are people who were sitting there and you were worried about what the next person would think if you raised your hand if you opened your mouth we ain't doing none of this for nobody else we doing it for him Amen. he needs that he wants to bless us and when we come to him another thing he said do not come to him with our wants we he knows what we want, but he's going to give us our needs. Our needs are for the king. He knows we need food. He want to make sure we eat. You know, he knows we need clothes. That's going to be provided. So us beggars, we are not beggars. We don't have to beg him for what we want. What we want necessarily. Because when it comes to sickness, when it comes to all those things, we have the power and authority in us. It's already done. Come on. Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. What you have given me. Not going to him in prayer saying, Lord, can I please, please, please. We need to start thanking him. You know, lately when I've given up, I've made it a goal. Lord, can I give you a thousand thank yous today? Can yeah. I give you a thousand praise? Yes, yes. We Just stay right there, because the Lord told me something. He Woo! told me He's imparting to you the anointing of Dr. Cindy Trim. Get back there! 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 Come on, if you don't know who Cindy Trim is, you don't. She's an apostle of anointing and spiritual warfare. Shabbat Makaya. Do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and mind. And I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of showed him so as the pastor is talking about the wilderness and he called the I just want to speak the name of Jesus if you receive that word today I want you to come to the front let's worship Jesus for a little bit come on come on if you receive that word today come forward I speak Jesus come on sing that song
mission today. You gotta go, fear and anxiety. What do we speak? We speak. This is 
is activation. We are activating our faith through our shout. We are activating our faith through our hands clapping. We are activating our faith through our praise and our worship. Through a twirl and a jump and a dance. Hallelujah. I will dance. I will dance like David did. It doesn't say let the quiet praises of God be in your mouth. It says let the high praise of God be in your mouth. It says clap your hands all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice, with the voice of triumph. Thank you Lord for what you're about to do. Thank you, Lord, that you've been preparing us all these years. We have learned lessons, hard lessons, but we have learned lessons in, 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 in the ministry and lessons in our life that we will never, ever repeat again. We just give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all honor today. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and great is the Lord and greatly to be what? Great. Father, we send an anointing to 3011 Street South. Where is that? That's where Sharon is right now. We send a breaker anointing there. I'm believing in faith she'll be here next Sunday. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. And everybody shouted amen. Everybody look at somebody and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Tell them God's about ready to blow your natural mind and expose you to Holy Ghost power and Holy Ghost overflow. In Jesus' name. Lift your right hand to heaven. Father, I bless these people. I ask that you bless them indeed. That you enlarge their territory. That you keep your hand upon them. And that you would keep them from evil. That Jabez prayer was the only prayer that was honored by you amongst all his brethren. And we pray that you would keep this church, your hand on the river church that you would keep this church away from evil and that you would cause blessings to overflow on this place and on individuals that are attached to this place. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, give three people a high five, a hug, a handshake. We bless you in the name of the Lord.